All right, so we're going to talk about a couple of things. We just wrapped the class up in Miami. We're still in Miami. We're getting ready to head back. But class was a great success. Guys left more capable, more efficient. I saw a chiropractor go from not really knowing many skills at all to being extremely violent when he needed to be and controlling the situation. So that was pretty fun to see. Um, and I'd have to say uh, the whole class did a great job. So it's cool. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Two badass chicks. Two badass chicks. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Got some, got a lot accomplished. So we've been getting a lot of questions about the blade, and you know they're they're coming up and we're like, hey, let's do a video. So instead of waiting to do the perfect video, we're just trying to get this information out there for guys. So some of the stuff that we're seeing is uh, questions about the rubber, questions about the sheath, the clip, the double edge. So we're gonna go into all that stuff. I think the biggest one was why people want to know why you switched from rubber to microfiber. Yeah, you know the the rubber initially was for straight up function. You know that's where we started. So the grip on that rubber is unlike anything that's out there. So if I'm operating and I'm going on target or I know that I'm going to be employing that thing, that is the best. That's the A plus solution. But when you start concealing it, guys were complaining that the rubber was so grippy that it was rubbing up against their skin. And I did notice that, but it, like, just like anything else that you carry on your waistline, you just have to adapt to it and get used to it. And I think some people weren't really willing to do that. So, okay, noted, we got it. Uh, the rubber still is available uh, by request. You know, we're trying to limit those. Um, but the thing that we will tell you right off the bat is that because the rubber is so thin and it, and it was a new production, that we are having a little bit of peeling issue on the edges. So we addressed it. You know, you can put super glue on it, you can fix it yourself, um, but for functionality purposes, the rubber was the best. But we went to Micarta because it's a lot more comfortable up the skin, on the skin, and you're not losing much functionality. Is it as grippy? No, but is it grippy enough to get the job done and hold on to this thing sturdy and, and be sturdy in your hand? Absolutely. I mean, I, we can still hit two by fours and, and get good deep penetration. <laughs> and. Uh, really have a, a good functional blade without that rubber grip. So we're going to save a lot of long-term problems by using the Micarta. A lot of headaches from you. A lot of headaches from you. Yeah, no peeling. Uh, nobody's complaining about any rubbing issues. So overall, I think it was a good switch. And honestly, it looks sexy. I mean, it really does. We don't get the Dynamis logo in there, but it's sculpted and it's unique. Every handle is unique in its own way. You know, again, these are custom blades. A lot of people are like, why are these so expensive? And I'm like, well, first of all, Daniel and I got together, but Daniel Daniel is a, a master bladesmith. You know, these things are not being pumped out of a machine. Everything's getting hands-on by everybody in the shop and really doing an amazing job. Each blade is unique in its own right. So that that's a big part of it. And to have a custom blade from somebody that's got such an amazing background, such a great American, and the design work that went into this, I just, you know, I'm still proud to sit here and hold this thing in my hand not only does it feel amazing, but it's got history behind it. Yep. Uh, another question a lot of people were asking were, uh, why double edge? Like, single edge, double edge, I was getting a lot of emails. Why should I pick double edge, should I pick single edge? You know, what do you guys prefer? So, yeah. I mean, we obviously prefer double edge. Yeah, per, I mean, just, just by penetration alone and the depth that you can get with each plunge, it, it's amazing the contrast between a single and double edge. You start getting hung up on that back edge if there's nothing there to cut. So whether it's getting hung up on bone, flesh, material, jacket, it's not slicing on that side. So there's a huge difference in penetration. Um, the second thing is we do a lot of reverse grip work and you always can get that back cut with the edge back here. Uh, I think one of, the, one of the really good points that you actually brought up was if I have a blade that I carry around all the time and I only pick one blade, it's that I have a working edge that I use for fighting. And then if I need to, if I say, okay, I need to cut something, I need to cut a box open, ideally you don't, right? I try not to use my working blade that I carry concealed for anything other than um, a self-defense situation. But if you had to, you could pick that edge to use as an as a, as a edge that you could use to cut things open and, and dull it a little bit if you had to employ it, as opposed to dulling that other side. So it gives you kind of a multi-purpose use, you know? Can you stop saying plunge and penetration in the same sentence? Because it's starting to fuck with me. <laughs> Check. Um, so obviously this knife feels great in forward grip. Um, we kind of, it was designed 
so that you can hold it forward or reverse, but we favor reverse grip. You know, I think a lot of people are curious why you favor reverse grip. Well, it, it's right off the bat, it's stronger for me. Everything about it feels better in the hand, and the reason we designed the blade with this thumb ramp here was because in reverse grip, if, you know, if you've climbed a rope, I mean, the way you grab the rope, you use these last three fingers and pull down. So when, you when you're pulling down, you're using the meat of this, your hand and these three fingers. So it's the same thing when I'm holding it here. It's like, I mean, you can see it up close, is that when I'm holding this thing, where my, where my hand sits in this, if I'm pulling down, it ends up kind of c contouring to the blade. So that's, that's a big reason that we designed it this way, but also for those reverse cuts, the pulling action, uh, it's easier to conceal, and for grappling purposes, just that clinch concept of doing a half clinch, whether it's tie boxing or combatives, I can't tell you how much we use a half clinch. Grabbing the head, grabbing the body, grabbing the arm, clearing something with that monkey grip. This essentially just becomes an extension of your arm. You know, just like we talk about that monkey grip, you know, while I clear things out of the way, all I'm doing is just adding this and now this is just the same thing, but extending it. Or here, I don't really have that ability to kind of hook. There's no way here I can hook anything it's kind of just a slicing motion or a pushing motion. Um, when I go here, now I've got this angle where I can hook something and pinch. So that's a big part of manipulation for us, whether it's grappling on the ground or standing up with multiple attackers, being able to manipulate limbs is a huge, huge factor. You know, you got anything else on that? Nope. All right, next question. <laughs> uh, another, people, uh, another question people were asking were, you know, I've seen you guys carry the blood shark, I've seen you guys carry the rat. Um, why why this why is this blade so big compared to those? You know, which one's better? And uh, the thing that I've been telling most people that this is the what we've talked about, it's the biggest concealable blade that you can have. Okay, it's that I mean you can conceal a machete in your pants, but it's not gonna be functional. You're not gonna be fully capable of, of what your body can do. It's gonna have limits. So with this, you have a full-size blade that you, you can now conceal. You can hit uh, any target that you really need to hit. And also, uh, with a larger handle, you're gonna have a faster draw, right? If it's law, if it, the closer something is and the bigger it is, the easier it is to hit, right? So if I have a small little blade that I'm trying to pull out under duress, it's gonna be harder for me to draw it. A larger handle is gonna be much easier for me to draw. Especially with reverse grip, I just slap my hand on there and it comes straight out. So, yeah. I mean, we're always evolving. Every, if you watch, you know, things come with time, and if you watch our evolution of our gear and the things that we employ, it's always going to be improving. There's never going to be a lull in that. So, I'm, I'm just saying that to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of where we're going with all this. There's different frame of people out there. We said, what's the, what's the best blade that you can carry, being as big as you could possibly get it? but still reach a big, a broad range of people. You know, larger frame guys, medium frame guys. You start getting into the smaller frame uh, men and women, then this becomes a little bit more difficult to conceal. Can you do it? Yes. Um, is there a better option out there? I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do with it. So keeping that in mind, I mean, we're, we're looking at, you know, the evolution of where this blade's gonna go and, and the other things that we're gonna start developing. So, I mean, that's the bottom line. Just, we said, how can we get the biggest blade package we can and still be able to conceal it on average frame guys? And the sheath, when you put it on, you can see if you own one of these already that the tip of the blade gets pretty close to the drain hole here, which means that the amount of uh, length that you add by adding the sheath is almost nothing. You're, it's insignificant. So you're able to keep the same size blade and not add much to it and still be able to conceal it, which is a huge win for us. We wanted to minimize this sheath as much as possible, no rivets, injection molded, and uh, you know our first production run, um, we've even evolved since then. We've made design changes to it, we've, we've tweaked the, the bosses that are holding the clip down, um, just everything. As soon as we identify a problem, we fix it. You guys email us, you guys tell us some feedback, we take that seriously, we take it, dump it into our, our next iteration, and, and that's it, that's how you evolve, you know? If I didn't listen to one person out there, then we're not doing our job to make the best product we can, you know, that's it. So on the sheath too, some people were having problems with the clips. Clips were breaking. And just looking at some pictures that people were posting about it, they're clipping the clip over their belt. 
And yes, you could do that, but if you can clip, this was meant to grab cloth. So, you know, if we had a belt loop or a soft loop that you hooked around the belt, that's one thing, but this is kind of meant for attaching right to the cloth. So behind the belt, on board shorts, um, on a rig, anywhere you want to put this thing, it, it'll grab whatever cloth it's attached to and keep it there while you draw the blade. So if you're stretching that thing constantly to get it over a belt, it's, it's unnecessary. Put it behind the belt, put the belt over it. Now you won't even see the clip if your shirt lifts up. True story. So yeah, the uh, some guys are, some guys are having the the cloth grabber um, snap off, snap off. <laughs> and uh, our first run of clips had uh, some heat treat issues. So not an A plus answer. I'm not heating heat treating these things. So. It's a, it's a problem we had and we're fixing it. So the next ones are gonna be completely uh, taken care of and, and way better than the last iteration. So what can we say about that? It, it happens, so we're fixing it. Uh, and blade classes. Everyone keeps asking, when's the, when's the blade class? Is there a blade class? Do you guys have a blade class? Um, and I've been trying to tell people that situational combatives, course that we put on, is a blade intensive class. It's unarmed. It's blade in different environments. Um, maybe one day we'll do just blade, counter and, and offensive use of it. But uh, for as of right now, we just have situational combatives. Yeah, the stuff that we're putting out now is, uh, we could easily come up with a, a day or two course of just blade stuff because we're, we're taking the blade stuff that we've seen out there and you know take the essential, discard all the useless information, apply what we think is the most effective and add what's uniquely our own, right? Bruce Lee, I mean, it's, it's, it's fundamentals and it's really taking that stuff and taking it seriously. And I, I believe that the stuff that we're putting out is unlike anything that I've seen out there. And uh, that's what we're trying to do is be really edgy. Of course, a lot of this stuff is, is very basic from where I've learned it. We're also adding some very unique things to kind of take your environment and manipulate things that you wouldn't necessarily think of and kind of change the culture of what we've seen blade fighting is and kind of turn turn it into something a little bit more um, offensive and strategic around uh, your environment. So it, it's exciting. I'm, I'm excited to teach these courses and I think what we're going to be coming up with is freaking awesome. No pedigree. No pancake. No exchange. <laughs> uh, you cut, then I cut. Uh, I think that was it. Is there anything else? I mean the pommel, oh, the pommel thing. Oh yeah, yeah. It's one. Uh, a few pommel. people were like, "Oh, there's no striking pommel. No, I can't. There's no point at the end that I can hit somebody with." Well, I, I, I don't. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's plenty of meat here that he's consuming, and it's a metal in my car at the back of this. And uh, the reason why we flatten it out is there's there's no spike there. You know, there's no there's nothing here that I can. Uh, you know, there's like no glass breaker point on it. Can I break glass with this? Yes, they're recommended. No, it's probably other tools that are better for it. But this is a, an in-close fighting weapon. I can I can hit you with the metal there, but what I don't take away with putting a spike on here is the fact that I can assist with it. You know, we talk a lot about assisting with your shoulder if you get hung up, assisting with your hand if you get hung up, and kind of just pushing that forward. If I put a spike back here, I totally lose that ability. And for me, it's not worth it. It's not worth being able to to use this as an assist than having a spike back there because you're still going to get the same effect with what you have back here. I mean, you can see that's pretty pointy. That's what you're going to get hammer fisted with if I do have to employ it. All right, I think if a full body weight hammer fist with a with the pommel is going to be suck. is going to suck, right? Yeah. And that that point isn't really a game changer. It's not enough for me to be like, eh, right. It's not going to make me win a fight. That's what right? my blade is. Right. That's what you have a fucking blade in your hand for. <laughs> I mean, you know, you want to stick a point in somebody? Well, it's right here. Yeah. Here you go. So. Uh, I mean, that's it, it's a blade. I mean, we, we, we get these questions in, it's like we wanna, we wanna talk about them. So we see them on social media, we grab them, we don't just ignore the stuff. So if you're putting a comment on our page, Diamond's page, my page, you know, we take it, we view it, we put it in the hopper, and we say, all right, let's, let's get a chance to talk about it. Of course, we don't slow down, so it's this traveling day that we have of getting done with the seminar in Miami. And, and heading back to uh, HQ. So we had some downtime, we wanted to get that information out there. And what else? I think it's about it. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, 
check out our webpage and subscribe, diamondsalliance.com or crusheverything.com, a little bit easier to remember. And keep updated with what we got going on. We've got courses coming up in Chicago, Illinois, where else? Austin. Boston. Dallas. Dallas. Combatus Pistol 2. I've had a lot of people ask about Combatus Pistol 2. And what that's going to consist of, obviously, getting a live fire. We're going we're gonna to cover what we did in, in Combatus Pistol 1. That's starting to look more like a three-day course because of how much information is going to be involved, of recapping, getting everybody proficient. I mean, we're literally having people leave with a lot of information. They're like, this changed the game of how I think about employing my pistol. Um, I'd say the biggest takeaway from this weekend was the bridge to fill that gap of people thinking that they just need to pull their gun and shoot to I have all these tools now where I can employ hand to hand, I can employ de-escalation, I can employ non-violent postures before I decide to pull my gun and take action that way. So that was the biggest takeaway from guys. They didn't even, they had scenarios where they didn't even touch their gun and I thought that was awesome. They were like, yeah, I didn't need to. I mean, that's what we wanted to teach and that's what they took away. So um, good stuff guys. We'll see you guys uh, on the next video.